Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2 was just recently released, and while it features interesting VR gameplay, it's the lore that keeps people talking the most. As with any FNAF game, how exactly everything we are seeing ties into the overall story isn't immediately 100% clear. For the most part, I think theorists have solved the broad strokes of the Help Wanted 2 story, such as the playable character being Cassie's dad, as well as the meaning of the two different endings. It is currently debated whether or not Cassie's dad is also the Bonnie bully from FNAF 4, but I do believe that the connection has bit some merit after a few things we see in the game. But what we're here to talk about in this video is probably one of the most frustrating parts of Help Wanted 2, the Gravestone Order in the Princess Quest 4 minigame. In order to unlock the area that we see the Bonnie mask along with the lines of, this looks familiar, the player must light the gravestones in the following order. Chica, Foxy, Freddy, Bonnie, Golden Freddy, and then the Puppet. What many theorists are thinking is that this displays the death order of the children associated with the animatronics, which certainly seems to be the cut and dry interpretation here. However, the main problem with this is that it uproots some of what many have believed was true about the earlier parts of the FNAF timeline, sending the community into debates on what seemingly conflicting information is most credible or should be believed. The purpose of this video is to lay out all the relevant information around this topic. Today, we take the most recent developments of FNAF and bring them all the way back to where everything started, in order to hopefully make clear what Help Wanted 2 is trying to tell us about the very first atrocities committed in the series. So it's always good just to make it clear exactly why something is important to the lore, and the order of deaths in the early timeline matters so much both for the cause of constructing an objective timeline and because they potentially provide a lot of insight into the motivations of the main antagonist, William Afton. Now I will say that I have an entire video detailing why the crying child must die first already on the channel, and if you want to know my full thoughts on the subject, I encourage you to go watch that as well. However, in theorizing, we have to be open-minded to change our theories and beliefs on the story as new information is presented to us. I feel like many theorists at least previously shared my belief of the crying child dying first, with the next largest group believing that Charlie died first, and I found both to be pretty valid beliefs even though I personally found the crying child's death being first much more compelling. These two events have been talked about to death, but for the sake of this video, I'll just give a quick rundown. The crying child is the youngest male in the Afton family, and was accidentally killed by his older brother Mike when the young teen shoved his timid brother into the mouth of the Fredbear animatronic, who tragically bit down and crushed the crying child's head, causing him to die of his injuries a little bit later. Charlie is the daughter of Henry, who was personally killed by William outside of a Freddy's location, or depending on what you believe outside of Fredbear's. Charlie went on to possess the puppet and was shown to have helped give life to the other MCI kids, who each possessed their own animatronics. Another thing that needs to be mentioned is why this gravestone order is such a big deal. The single most confusing thing is that the puppet was placed at the end, after all of the MCI kids. This goes against a lot of what we thought we knew, and even seems to directly contradict what Henry said in FNAF 6. A wound first inflicted on me, but then one that I let bleed out to cause all of this. Henry refers to his daughter's killing as a wound that was first inflicted upon himself which seems to be very clearly suggesting that Charlie was William's first murder. So the question now is, what do we make of that? I would like to say up front that I still believe that the crying child died first. You'll notice that he's not really represented by the plushies associated with the graves, and while one could argue that he could be linked to the Golden Freddy one, it is the vengeful spirit that I find much more synonymous with that animatronic, and Casty, or whoever you believe that spirit is, makes much more sense with the context of being with the rest of the MCI kids. I recognize that some people have claimed that the MCI predating the crying child's death would make sense for some minor things of FNAF 4, such as the rumors of the animatronics coming alive at night and hiding your body if you die. Personally, I see this as a sort of reverse foreshadowing, if that makes any sense creating some dramatic irony given that the player knows that bodies of dead children eventually really are hidden inside of the animatronics. Also, it really seems that his death is separate from what the gravestones are trying to convey, given that they are all represented with kids that were both personally murdered by William and went on to possess an animatronic of their own. The crying child's death was an accident and not from any malicious intent. 
Obviously, I go further into the arguments for and against the crying child's death being first in my video dedicated to the subject, so once again, go check that out for further clarity, but as far as this video, we're going to move on. Now, the real problem is the placement of the puppet, aka Charlie. It truly is frustrating that she is located last in the order. Not only does Henry's line indicate that she was the first murder, but narratively, it makes so much more sense that William would kill Henry's daughter first, as most interpretations of why William has become a serial killer in the first place is because of some sort of enmity he had with Henry. You can't even go a weird angle and say that the Greys are showing a reverse order making the puppet actually first, because that would undermine the fact that Chica would no longer be the first in the MCI kids order, which is the one thing that the Greystones have remained consistent with. This is further confirmation that I was the first. I have seen everything. But before we get up in arms about this new supposed order of deaths and what that means for the early narrative, is this even credible evidence to base our theories off of? Long story short, yeah, unfortunately, I do think it is. At this point, FNAF doesn't just do things that really seem like a hint without them actually being a hint. For a long time now, FNAF as a franchise has understood that a large part of its allure is the unraveling of the storyline and the lore. Furthermore, Help Wanted 2 specifically seems to be attempting to tie together some loose ends and somewhat clarify things. Having an entire room in a minigame that has appeared so many times contain a gravestone lighting arrangement that unlocks an important achievement cannot be meant just to be an arbitrary puzzle. There also isn't anything else that the ordering can really mean besides the order of deaths unless you're really going to stretch things, which at that point just makes it a whole lot less believable. So, I do believe that this is a credible evidence of the death order, at least for the moment. FNAF has always been a series where we have to reevaluate the story as we go with every new installment. So, if anything comes up in the future that suggests otherwise, of course that should be taken into account and I'm all for it. But for now, I think we do have to accept this as the death order. So, what does this mean for Charlie and Henry? I've seen some fans suggest that it is impossible for Charlie to die after the MCI kids because she was already the puppet in the Give Gifts, Give Life minigame. However, I think it could be reasonable to say that they were all killed in very close succession, giving the puppet an opportunity to give the kids life shortly thereafter. There is some disagreement on who stuffed the kids into the animatronics, some believing William did it to hide the bodies, while others believe that the puppet stuffed them as part of trying to give them life. I see the merit in both interpretations, but I personally could easily see a world where William stuffs them and then sometime after he kills Charlie, she finds them as the puppet and helps them to possess their animatronics. I don't have a huge stake in the William stuff versus puppet stuff, but with the MCI kids getting killed before Charlie, I am leaning more towards William stuffed them and the puppet just helped them to possess the animatronics. Either way, there isn't really a hard set time in between kills that we can derive. For all we know, they could have all been killed on the same day or slightly different days, but probably it's reasonable that they're all relatively within close range of each other. At first, I really didn't like the idea of the MCI happening before the murder of Charlie. I find it frustrating when there are seemingly two conflicting pieces of evidence. And in this case, it's the wound first inflicted on me line from Henry and then this gravestone order. The only thing I can currently think of to justify it in a narratively satisfying way, at least in the moment, is what Henry meant is that William originally did all of this to hurt him. First the MCI kids to tarnish the Freddy's name, and then Henry's own daughter in a sick quest for revenge. It is compelling to think of William killing the other five kids as a sort of initial attack, an action that was sort of leading up to the slaying of Henry's own daughter, to which Henry just completely mentally broke down and withdrew from everything for about 30 years, thus leading to the words, letting the wound bleed out into all of this. On the other hand, there may have been prior events that we are currently unaware of that have contributed to the early events of the series. Fallfest keeps getting teased, and apparently whatever Fallfest was, happened back to 1983 and even in uh, 1970 or sometime in the 70s, uh, which is before like most if not all of the FNAF timeline, and some theorists have suggested that we will get more clarification about what exactly led William to kill the kids and his hatred for Henry in a game that is centered around the Fall Fest. Who knows what future FNAF games have in store, but all we can do right now is continue to speculate. I hope this video made sense and that my thought process could be easily followed. Like I've already mentioned, a lot of my thoughts on the earliest events of the FNAF timeline can be found in my Catalyst video, linked in the description and on the screen. If you enjoy FNAF and complicated lore in general, it's always helpful if you leave a like and a comment, and of course subscribe to the channel for more content like this. 
Also, if you like to read, I have my own science fiction book series that's available on Amazon. So always feel free to check that out as well. Leave your thoughts and theories in the comments below. And until next time, it's been Playmaster.